Okay, so here's your outline of what we're going to talk about. Types and targets, so which asteroids should we go to, what yep. are the choices, um, what are they made out of, what are we going to get out of them, is it going to be good? Um, the economics, do we make enough moolah to actually pay for the whole thing? Because that's all it's all about, right? And uh, are we going to get sued by someone in the process? <laughs> so let's start off talking about types and targets. I mean, are, are all asteroids the same? So no, this is the actual unique thing about it. I mean, asteroids are... I would say probably more diverse in some ways than planets. There's a lot of ways of carving up asteroids and what is this asteroid? What is it made up of? And Possibly because there are a lot more of them than planets. I mean, with eight planets, there's not that many ways you can divvy them up. Asteroids with billions, you've got more choices of sort. I mean, right. in some sense, they're all the same. I mean, they're all yes. a lump of rock. They've, none of them have got any atmosphere. Yep. Um, they're all just tumbling, irregular. Well, the big ones are more round, and the smaller ones are more irregular. So in that sense, they're all the same. They are. W the way we really break them up in is is kind of their main composition. What are the materials that they have? And they do have different ratios, uh, as we saw in um, some of the planets section. Some of the meteorites that we find on Earth are quite different. So we have samples of a lot of these things because asteroids, colliding with other asteroids, is a major source of the meteorites that land on Earth. That's right. Uh, we don't necessarily know this lump of rock came from this asteroid. The other thing we can do is we can try and measure the spectra, as yep. we talked about in the STARS course, the, the light reflected off these things. And that gives us some clue, not as much as we'd like, as to what these things are actually made of. And so we can kind of piece those two together and we can say, all right, here are some main categories of asteroids. And, and C-type asteroids are, are the majority of the asteroids out there. They're the, the chondrites, the carbonous chondrites, which are, are quite useful in some cases, right, Paul? Yes, yeah, so in the, in the um, other parts of the course, we've talked about carbonaceous chondrites, which are the meteorites, these little balls called chondrules that are used to date the solar system. And these are, in some sense, the most primordial. These are perhaps the oldest, least modified, and they're very common. Um, they're, they're a bit mixture of clay, silicon. They're very dark on the surface. The spectrum of light reflecting off them is pretty featureless. That's right. It's very featureless. So kind of one of the ways we find them is by not finding actually a lot about it when we look at it. You look at something and it looks mm, not much to see there. Ah, oh, pardon, C-type. That's right. <laughs> um, which is maybe why they're the most popular as well, um, because there's some issues with how far away they are and we can observe them. We have S-type asteroids, what we call the stony asteroids. Now, these are kind of the more second more popular ones like 433 Eros. Uh, and for those who don't know the naming scheme, the number comes from the catalog number of which it was discovered and the name from the choice the discoverer got to choose. That's right. If you discover an asteroid, uh, you get to name it, but not after yourself, as opposed to a comet where you get to name it after yourself. <laughs> uh, but you have to come up with a name, and it has to get vetted by the International Astronomical Union to make sure it's not obscene in any language, not too commercial. You know, 433, McDonald's sponsored this, might not get past them. That's right. It also can't be taken, and it has to be a real language. Um, but people like to name them after gods, um, families, eminent astronomers, or people in the community. So you'll see lots of these names. But these are really what we call more ordinary chondrites, these stony chondrites, so a little bit different from the carbonaceous chondrites. Yes, so they're made of silicate and iron nickel, so that's much like rocks on Earth. Yes, so they're a little bit more similar to rocks on Earth. They're brighter than the C-type asteroids. As you said, you know, if you don't see much in the spectrum or uh, when you're looking at in the C-type, it's probably a C-type. When we start to see some features in the spectra, it becomes a little bit red uh, and a bit brighter. We call them an S-type, but still similar-esque to the C-types. I should mention that when you measure how bright something is, you don't really know whether it's yes. bright because it's big or because it's bright because it's got a nice polished white surface. Um, what you can do, though, is look at the infrared emission and look compared to the optical emission. So something that's very black will not reflect much sunlight, but it will radiate a lot of infrared radiation. So the infrared tells you how big it is, and then you compare that with the optical wavelength, and that will tell you whether it's got a nice white surface or some deep, dark, blackish, reddish surface. And, th and these measurements like the albedo, which we'll talk about in a bit, are really critical to doing both that optical and the infrared. So you actually know the type of asteroid and the size of asteroid you're dealing with because, hey, we found a rich asteroid. Oh, it's, it's a small pebble. Probably not the target we're talking about for asteroid mining. I mean, there are a few, like these ones that have been visited by space probes, yep. but again, given they're a uh, 
many millions of the things out there, the vast, 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 vast majority have never been visited by a spacecraft. They're too far away by and large for us to resolve them. So they just look like a dot in the, any ground-based or even space-based telescope, except for the few that come very close to the Earth. We can hit them with radar beams. Well, this is a great example of this M-type asteroid. And this is using a, a highly sophisticated eight-meter telescope in Chile and that's the best image of this asteroid yeah. we have. Now these M-types are perhaps the most useful ones for, uh, for space mining. Yeah. They're also relatively rare, yes. and none of them have ever been visited by a spacecraft Correct. yet. I assume you tried to find the best picture of all these asteroid types you could, <laughs> and this is the best you could yeah. find for one of these, which is and not very impressive. This just tells you how, how rare it is, how hard to find, and how difficult it can be, because he said there, there's a bunch of those seas, and we've visited some seas, and uh, Osiris Rex and Hayabusa 2, recent missions have visited these C-type asteroids. And now. even brought samples back. Yeah, which is amazing. We visited some S-types, Hayabusa 1, visited Arakawa. We haven't visited, as you said, these M-types, but yet these are the ones that we talk about, because we think they are M for metal. They are metals, iron and nickel. And if you want rock, Earth has rock. Yeah, we don't need rock in space. The trouble on Earth is that most of the metals, well, Earth has plenty of metals, the trouble is mostly they melted and sank to the centre of the Earth, 6,400 kilometres below our feet is not so easy to get. No, that's right, and we've even realised that some of the composition a little bit varies with distance because they're in different parts of the asteroid belt. Not even ones in the same group can be all metal, the ratios of iron and nickel can change. We'll talk a little bit more about this. I mean, this one's obviously big enough a little bit to have its own two moons. Um, now, there are other types of asteroids. And again, we're, we're not going to really talk about this because it's not as relevant for us. There's D types, which are the darker ones, and P types. What's interesting about these is these are, uh, they appear to be rich in organics. So interested for looking at history of the solar system, composition of the solar system, that sort of thing. But not so useful for mining. I mean, the main things you're going to want for mining are things that you can't find on Earth. And so the metal type asteroids with huge amounts, that lovely metal that on Earth is deep underground would be great. The other thing that would be useful, I guess, would be organics or water to make rocket fuel. We've talked about getting those from Mars and the Moon where it's tricky. Um, and it could be that some of the asteroids have a fair amount of volatiles, especially the ones on the further outside yes. of the asteroid belt. In fact, some of these things, if you look at them really closely, show little halos or like they're mini comets almost, mm. which means they must have some volatiles. But the ones close into the sun that's all been boiled away a long time ago so that's something that we can look at as well